Hello and welcome to the Rotherham Advertiser's second Euro 2016 Sports Chat Special. Joining me around the table as always are a group of uh, expert pundits that include news editor Michael Upton. Morning. Columnist Charlie Graves. And a very good morning. And Miller's correspondent David Beddows. Good day. Gentlemen, let's start talking about tomorrow's big fixture, England against Wales in the UK derby. David, Gareth Bale, the uh, Wales talisman, Real Madrid's star player, has come out and said that England uh, don't have as much pride and passion as their Welsh counterparts and that none of the team would get in the Welsh squad. Do you think that'll serve as uh, team talk for Roy Hodgson and his men? Probably in a way. I mean, it's a bit of ammunition for England, isn't it? I mean, putting all that to one side, this is, the pressure is on England in this game and that should be motivation enough You know, when they're gathering that changing room. Um, I mean, such is the competition now, it's a bit bloated. And if you get one win, basically, you can get through the group stage. And England need that win. If they don't get it tomorrow, then the pressure's on the final one. So, I mean, England have got a lot of talent, a lot of Premier League high-earning players. And I think, you know, through time, Wales have had, you know, more sort of base motivation. But it, it won't uh, be wanted tomorrow for motivation in England, I don't think. Michael, uh, England won one of their opening games in, in the last ten tournaments. It could go either way now, couldn't it, that draw against Russia? They could either kick on and it be seen as a good point, or it could drag them down and uh, and ultimately fail to qualify from the group as we saw at the last World Cup. Possibly. I mean, the, um, the coach and the players seemed to be thinking that it was a good performance, so the result didn't matter that much. Oh, we, we all played really well, we played really well. Well, play really well against Wales and lose or fail to fail to win, it'd be completely academic. Uh, they, they need to kick on because, let's face it, Wales, yeah, they've got a good team spirit and they've got a couple of really high-class players. But England should be winning against Wales nine times out of ten. They've, they've simply got better players all over the park. Uh, with the greatest respect to Ashley Williams, their defence is extremely suspect. Charlie, how do England go about stopping Bale and Aaron Ramsey, the Arsenal midfielder? They're the two key men in, in, in Wales' team. What have England got to do? Well, I have to say that I think Bale's comments were, were on the, uh, really on the spot. I mean, I think they have got more passion. I think England showed very little and I think they just got to up the game, but I'm not sure that they can do it. I'm quite expecting Wales to, I think they could quite easily win. I think England are just, for whatever reason, just not with it at the moment. And uh, I think they'll struggle tomorrow. I haven't said that, though. I think where he goes on to say... No England players are getting the Welsh squad. He's he's been a, a bit of a joke there. It's got to be too much cheating. He'd accept a lot of those players into the Welsh squad quite happily, I would think. Based on football. Yeah, exactly. Dave, just to go back to that Russia game a little bit, uh, as Michael said, it, it was a good team performance, wasn't it? But as we saw Germany do uh, the, a day later, they they won the lob in stoppage time, broke away and scored a second and sealed the three points. England couldn't do that, and ultimately they, they ended up conceding in stoppage time. Where did they get that ruthless edge from? Where, where did it come from? I, I mean, <clears throat> the Germans got the job done, and they always do, don't they? That's the difference. I mean, there's two ways of looking at this. I thought uh, England were bright, breezy, plenty of ability. They looked good, but at the end of the day, this, that was a fairly inept Russia side. As poor a Russian team as I've seen in a long time. I think Russia has shown England a lot of respect. I think Russia have decided that they could beat Wales and Slovakia. They decided to be fairly defensive against England and ultimately they got out of jail. In terms of that breakaway that Germany got, of course England had, had the chance with Ryan Sterling. The difference there is that you had Sterling um, running way down the left versus Mesut Ozil doing the same for Germany and being a much better player and, and able to do something with the ball at the end. I think we just, just stop saying that we're, we're better than we are. I mean, why do we keep saying that, you know, we're a good side and that? We're not. We didn't. It's not on, on paper, right Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, the paper. games aren't played on paper. No, we saying that, though, are we? The fact is, we you know we we were bright and breezy for part of the time, but we you know we you still got to score goals to win games, and we look suspect at the back. So you know if we get out of the group, I think we'll have done well. I feel Michael's point about Russia showing his respect. I think that's fair enough. But when they went behind, um, a bit like Northern Ireland the other day, they had no plan B. They had no plan B. They, they weren't able to switch, and it was just <laughs> well a free carry. It were a good header, wasn't it? Um, but they should be put nine times out of ten. England would have won that game, and they did have the chances to do it. That's the thing. I think if, if you're going to look at changes, it's a question with Hodgson. Do you say, well, Alana was bright and he was involved and he had chances, or do you, are you ruthless and you say we didn't take any of them? Maybe pick somebody who might 
put those chances away. Well, this is the decisions now that Roy Hodgson has got to make, has, hasn't it? Does he stick with that eleven that that played well but ultimately didn't get the result that was needed? Or does he switch it round and, and hope for something more ruthless and hope for better? But it could go either way. Charlie, what would you, what would you do if you were in Well, I'm just wondering why we've brought Vardy if he's not going to play him. I mean, he was probably the, I think, probably among the best two or three players in the Premier League this season. Didn't get a sniff, did in the first game. Um, so, for you, Vard, so for you, Vardy would be playing against I think Wales. he would, yeah. And I, mean, I wouldn't have took Sterling. I think Sterling's great, runs a lot, puts his head down and loses the ball. I don't, Andros Townsend ought to have gone as far as I'm concerned. I don't like to agree with Charlie, as you know, but I think it's, it's perfectly set up for uh, Jamie Vardy. I, don't, I think um, it will be quite possibly like a Premier League game. I don't think Wales will be able to sit deep all the way uh, way through. They might want to get a result themselves. And I think there will be opportunities to break in behind. I also think he's got the ability against those defenders to score goals. So do you, if he's allowed in the penalty, do you drop Harry Kane or do you play both of them? No, I'd drop Sterling and, and pick uh, probably Vardy on the left and put Kane through the middle and stop him taking corners for crying out loud. Well, let's talk about that. Big talking point to come out of that game, Dave, was the ludicrous uh, taking of corners by England's top goal scorer. Six Sh- foot two, Harry Kane. Surely when a ball is guaranteed to be coming into the box, you want your most clinical striker in there with a chance of getting his head on it or hitting a rebound or being in the right place at the right time, not stuck out at the corner flag taking it, surely. <laughs> he looked like a man who never took a corner, didn't he, before that match. I mean, came up quiet <clears throat> and he was disappointed. And I've expected Vardy to be brought on at least as an impact player. And I think there's certainly a case for it, you know, resting him and uh, giving Vardy a chance. Is there an element that the, the players aren't following the manager's instructions? Because Wilshire and Milner came on, presumably both to keep the ball... And straight away, Milner's trying to play cheeky one-twos around the opposition box and giving the ball. Away. Well, this could be one thing that that Roy like Hodgson. A discipline, that, isn't it? This could be one thing that Roy Hodgson's learned from that game. The fact that he took his most experienced tournament player off in Wayne Rooney and brought maybe a not fully fit Jack Wilshere. The shining light, though, the Jack Wilshere who has been singing the praises of for the past three or four weeks is what. Let him well, the guy who's been injured for most of the season. Well, but he's, he brings brings something to the side that no one else can apparently. Yeah, that's giving the ball away and then giving it back to Russia in the final 20 minutes. I think I think that boils down to, Dave, I don't know if you agree, the fact that what we'll talk about with Germany, they broke away and got the second goal. Maybe Wilshire was trying something similar, but isn't as technically as good to, to pull it off like the Germans. Mm, quite, quite. I mean, taking the experienced player off, Rumi looks comfortable in that position. He, he looked good at that, but he, got, he lost the ball once or twice as well, and he robbed in possession. So Against better players, it, it, it could come and suck onto it. This is the worry. I mean, maybe we were a bit harsh in England last week. I mean, this is a team that won all its qualifying games. Maybe we're harsh, but there's always a feeling that as soon as they come up against strong opposition in the last 16, See, the, we're going to hit a brick wall. The thing that we, we haven't seen from England, that we've seen from most of the other teams, is the pride and the passion and the commitment to go forward and to look as though they want to score. I mean, you know, we've got uh, Rooney imitating a crab again by going across all the time instead of going forward. I mean, I don't think he, he ought to be in the side, to be honest. If we've got all these young guns as are supposed to be the future, then get rid of them and get them in and let's get some bloody pride and passion and go for it and not look like idiots. Can you get if we did the first game. Charlie Grave showing plenty of pride and passion <laughs> on the uh, Rather Than Advertising well, Sports Chat podcast. That comes from the manager, though, doesn't it? The manager's got to Well, the manager's is about as much use as a chocolate teapot, he's as far as I'm concerned. He's got to fire them up, and I don't think he's necessarily he doing that. Yeah. And he also, I do, I do think there is a, a weight of expectation on this side that if they get a goal in front, there is an element of... Do we go for the second? Goal? Yeah, it's stick or twist, isn't it? That's been a problem for England for for some time. In previous tournaments, in, in the Italy game um, at the World Cup, they were to go up and then didn't quite know where they sort of do something second. in between, don't they? Yeah. They don't sit back and defend in an organised way like Italy did, but they don't go forward but and attack and get another goal like. We've Germany. got no world class players, have we? But I can't We've remember got... tactically. I can't remember a tournament game where England went to go up and really went for the second, went for the jugular. To try and kill a side off, they they just don't seem to quite know whether or not one is enough. Oh, game management, seeing the game out, get to half time, play it play it cleverly, or whether they should be going for the second or third. And I think we we all have a, our own views on that. But I would be trying to kill sides off. If we go one nil up against Wales tomorrow. I want to see England go for a second. I don't know about anyone else. Yeah, I think Craig's I mean, he did ch- take the shackles off. Did, but only did. for the first half, and then the second half. They seem to 
to lose a bit of the yeah. impetus, isn't it? Yeah. The, tone is, tired. the tone of this conversation and podcast will be totally different if it happened for that, you know, out of the blue equaliser. That's very true. It's very true. It's Russia, Russia didn't have lots of chances. We'd still be talking about the chances that England <clears throat> missed. And it's all very well not taking them in a group game. But looking at the way things work out, if England come third in the group, they're going to be playing Germany or Spain in the second round, I would, I would say. Are we expecting to get one, two or three chances against either of those sides? You need clinical players who are going to take chances. And if Harry Kane's off the boil, that's when you need Lallana and Sterling to look like they are top-class players, rather than players who haven't played that much football. And when they have, haven't necessarily had the end product. Part of my cynicism is that if Jamie Vardy played for one of the big five instead of Leicester City, would he have been playing in that game at the weekend? You know, I you think wonder. you'd struggle to get Vardy, Rooney, Kane and Sterling in the same side. I think he likes Sterling. I think he, he loves Wayne Rooney because of his, his, his past record of scoring a lot of goals against not very good sides. And... I don't think he necessarily thinks that Vardy's got the experience. <coughs> I'd be amazed if he didn't get any time tomorrow. I would start him, but if he doesn't get 45 minutes, what's the point of taking then? him? Well, that's a kind of backstop in case a couple of people get, get, <laughs> in, get injured. We could get yeah. back into what's going on with that squad, with three centre-halves and 11 midfielders if you want him. But I, think that's a I don't think we've got time on today's podcast, because funnily enough, it is coming towards an end. <coughs> Michael, I would uh, just like to uh, get sports chat first and get you to admit that Wayne Rooney did play fairly well at the uh, in the first game. No, I think he was a, I think he was one of the better players. Right, we'll not have a but. That's perfect. Thank you very much, Michael. Right, we're going to get predictions now uh, for the Wales game. We'll start with Mr Beddoes. David, how do you think England are going to go on this? I second? think it might be a few goals, but I also think um, it may be a draw. So we're coming on the final game. I'll go for 2-2. Charlie? I think it'll be a kick fest. It'll not be a great game. They'll be kicking lumps off each other and I suspect that we won't finish 11 against 11, and I would think it'd probably be a goalless draw. Michael? I actually don't think the 2 o'clock afternoon kick-off time is going to do any, anyone any favours. I think that might kill the atmosphere a bit. Um, I would like to think England will win 2-1, but I, I've thought since the draw that I think I thought it'd be a, a low-scoring draw. I think it'd probably be a one all Perfect. Thank you very much, gentlemen. If you'd like to get in touch with this debate at home, you can through Twitter at Roth Tizer Sport. You can also get your uh, you can also get your your predictions in on there as well. Sorry about that. Quick mention has to go to uh, a certain Mr. Kari Arneson, Michael. Uh, last night, his Iceland minnows went up against Ronaldo and Co. and uh, managed to win a one-one draw. Arneson having a having a blinder along with the rest of his team. He and his uh, centre back. Uh, partner Gunnison were outstanding. Uh, to be honest, um, Portugal's attackers weren't playing out of their skins, it has to be said, but Kerry never looked phased. We've seen that swagger at New York Stadium many a time, and he always believed he was destined for greater things, and quite clearly he was. Dave, it's, it's great to see isn't it? a former Rotherham player of not even that long ago, a year ago, who was gracing the, the New York pitch, uh, bringing the ball out of defence, and then he was doing exactly the same against Portugal. A really calm. Look really yeah, calm yeah. and composed. I've seen him on them, you know, rainy nights at Tranmere Rovers on a Tuesday night, and how good he was. I mean, we all know we're a, a you know a silkily skilled player. This lad is as well. I mean, last night he was just positionally spot on. It was it was his defensive qualities that impressed. Well done to Carry Anderson from everyone at the Rotherham Advertiser. That wraps up this week's podcast. Then we'll be back again uh, next week before England's third game, where it's either going to be really cheery, happy, and smiley, or damp, dark, and depressed. Look forward to listening.